Hi, my name is Scott Ainia, and I wanted to make this video and share with you the wonders of flying the beautiful North Country. I bought this plane in January and, and have been having a blast ever since. It has allowed me to drop down on many beautiful lakes like this one all over Ontario and Quebec. This is Northern Ontario, land of the lakes, where there is as much water as there is trees and rock. This is one of the most beautiful places in the world and I'm lucky to live here and be able to fly around and land on these beautiful remote lakes and go fishing where few people have fished before. The only way to get to most of these lakes is either by float plane or portage in a canoe. Not to put down portage in a canoe, and those things are a lot of fun and I've done lots of those in the past. But flying a float plane and landing on a remote lake is a lot more fun a lot faster and a lot easier than humping a canoe through the woods. Life couldn't be any better than this. Today is a beautiful fall day without even a breeze, so I must perform what's called a glassy water landing. When there's no wave action and the water is so reflective, it is impossible to tell where the surface is. Fortunately, I'm close to the shore and the trees, so that helps me to determine how close I am to the surface. In this maneuver, I will bring the plane down level with the treetops and then pull the nose up and add power to about 2000 RPM. This reduces the descent of the aircraft and allows the aircraft to gently set down on the water. Absolutely beautiful. Since there is very little fishing pressure on these lakes, you can catch 30 or 40 fish a day without too much trouble. I wanted to make a YouTube video of this fantastic airplane that uh, I purchased last winter. It's called the Levitation 4. It's a short takeoff and landing plane, stole. Uh, in the winter time, I was off the ground in 100 feet with wheels on the runway. I have floats on the plane now, and I'm in a beautiful lake in northern Ontario. I'll just take a little scan here of the area so you can all see. You can't get into this lake by car. This only way is to come in by airplane or by walking. And I'm not up to the walk. There's a lot of lakes around here. You tried to walk in here, you'd have to portage with a canoe. And you'd spend a lot, of, a lot of time in swamps, swampy areas. It's more lake than it is, than it is earth around here. Definitely airplane is the way to go. The special parts of this plane, and the reason why it's such a short takeoff and landing plane, is due to these slats here. These slats, the slats go in automatically when you are in a cruise, when you're when you're landing, or when you're taking off. They come out automatically by themselves, like that. The air goes up underneath the slat and it helps to stick the air to the top of the wing and keeps the airplane from stalling. Automatic slats on the leading edge of a wing increase the maximum lift coefficient of an aircraft, allowing it to fly at lower speeds or carry a heavier load. They do this by delaying the stall, the point at which the airflow over the wing separates and loses its ability to produce lift. Automatic slats accomplish this by redirecting the air flowing over the wing, causing it to flow more smoothly and reducing the turbulence that leads to stall. This allows the wing to maintain its lift at a higher angle of attack, allowing the aircraft to fly more slowly or carry more weight. Additionally, automatic slats can also improve the handling characteristics of an aircraft, making it more stable and easier to control at low speeds. Automatic slats open and close aerodynamically. They're not managed by the pilot, they're managed by airflow. When air approaches the leading edge of an airfoil, it divides some flowing over the top of the wing and some flowing over the bottom. The spot where the airflow splits is called the stagnation point. When the airfoil's at a low angle of attack, the stagnation point is on the leading edge. 
As you can see in this diagram, the airflow pushes the slat closed. When the airfoil is at a high angle of attack, the stagnation point moves below the leading edge and behind the slat. Air flowing up and over the wing pushes the slat open. The stall speed on this clean is 32 knots. That's incredibly slow. When it's cruise speed is 100 knots and top end is 120. So I bought this plane from a lovely lady, Elaine Duranso. Um, she built this plane in the factory in Mount St. Michael, Quebec. You can see Captain Aviation. It's a kit built plane. So she had to build a certain percentage of it. The manufacturer and the guy that designed this plane, his name is Michael LeQuinn. And uh, he has made a fantastic plane. It's very tough, very rugged. It has a 180 horse Titan engine, ECI Titan engine in it, um, an O360. So it has a lot of get up and go. Here is a short clip demonstrating the performance of the aircraft on wheels. The stripes on the runway are 100 feet long and the space between the stripes are also 100 feet. You can see the wheels leave the ground between the first and second stripe. On this touch and go landing, the plane lands just past the numbers and could have been stopped within 100 feet or so. The plane was only doing about 50 knots on touchdown. This performance is only possible due to the slatted wings and the O360 Titan engine. So along with these slats, it has flaperons at the back. So the flaperons, that's the aileron, and the flaps are together in one piece. It actually acts as a bit of a wing as well. So when I pull the yoke, which is actually a stick, back and forth, you can see the flaperon goes up and down like an aileron. The flaps are mechanical. So that's a full 30 degrees flap. And that that's in the center. So that's fully deflected aileron and flap together. That's zero. You go minus five or minus 15, and that's minus 15 there. Uh, I only do that for storage. You can go minus five if you want uh, to get a little bit more cruise speed out of it, but it becomes a little stiffer on the, on the steering. I never usually do that. So it has a constant speed Hartzell prop on it. That makes a difference in the cruising speed and the gas consumption, obviously. When I bought this plane, it had such a shine on it, you could, you could shave in the mirror. Um, it's been on the water all summer. This is uh, November the uh, 7th, I believe. And uh, pretty soon I'll have to take the floats off it and put the wheels back on. I'm really dreading that. I really had a lot of fun with it on floats this summer. Um, Elaine, she had this polish so shiny. It was, it was a beautiful thing to see when I first bought it. I'll add some pictures. It was an incredibly cold day. It was minus 37. I thought my lungs were gonna freeze when I stepped out of the motel. So in the back we have a stabilizer instead of an elevator. So that means the whole back goes up and down. And sees these, uh, Fins on here to help for a float plane. Has a huge trim on it, and the trim is the same on both sides. Back rudder, it's it's uh, very large, and I have uh, a little bit of trouble sometimes if I have a windy day and I'm trying to get away from the dock. That's just like a big sail, and it takes off on me. So it has a huge compartment in the back. As you can see, there's a whole pile of room back here. Um, there should be some seats back there, uh, but I've taken them out to have extra room for uh, going fishing uh, way up north here in Canada. 
Um, those are some fishing camps. So we've got uh, electric motor and a battery, uh, the tackle box, toolbox, water. Um, we've got the reel, my reel box here. Also got uh, my rod container here. I've also got one rod container here on the outside. Uh, my my uh, lovely wife bought me a one-piece rod. Inside, we have uh, Dion Avionics Flight Deck one T180, and on the other side, we have a, a Dion uh, 60. In the middle, we have a Garmin GPS, but I use my uh, iPad, and uh, typically. I'm using four flight. We have the uh, manifold pressure, tachometer, oil pressure, and oil temperature. It also has the fuel gauges for the wing tanks, which I don't use that much. Uh, we also have two gauges down here for the uh, front tank and the and the rear tank. These are both belly tanks. You can see down here where the front tank holds 106 liters, the rear tank holds 70 liters, and the wing tanks hold 140 liters. And in gallons altogether, that's 79 gallons, about 11 hours. We have a cabin heat and oil cooler underneath that. We uh, leave the oil cooler open all summer and close it in the wintertime. If we go through the menus, if we go, if we go through the main display, we got, we have our horizon, we have our altitude at the top, our compass, heading, and uh, our our airspeed here on the side, and at the bottom, uh, we have the ball. Underneath here, we have the um, the cylinder head temperatures and the exhaust temperatures in Celsius. When we go through the different pages, we have the voltage, outside temperature, carb heat, we have the amperage, and these are uh, the, the computer, uh, fuel computer for the uh, wing tanks, and you'll see that on the next page. So here we got the two wing tanks, and you can see the uh, in the center of the fuel computer. But you have to uh, to put in manually gallons per hour and the gallons, uh, how much gallons you have on board, and then that'll work itself backwards, give you an idea how much you have left. At the bottom, you'll have the gallons per hour and the pressure. Uh, for the fuel pump, which is pretty important. We also over here have um, the fuel pressure and the alternator light on top of the ELT. Very important uh, aspect when you have multiple tanks and that light comes on and tracks your eye immediately and gives you a couple of minutes before you run out of fuel to change the tanks over. So that's, that's a critical component for uh, multiple tanks. If we go back over here, um, here is the uh, the timers, and uh, gives you your local time, uh, Zulu time, and uh, many of your flight timers. And at the bottom, you have the tack and the hobs. So I use the tack timers for my uh, my engine hours. Uh, very convenient. And the last menu is the uh, compass. We have more compartments down in here in the float. I keep uh, an anchor down in there and some, some fenders and a pump. That's a pump to pump out the uh, floats. I don't get very much water in the floats, but there, there are um, vents on the top there for 
uh, the different temperatures so water can get in there and water does come in through the lid uh, on heavy rains. I thought I would add some pictures of some of the beautiful places I've been since taking to the air. This is Clarny Lake. It's just north of Georgian Bay, and it is absolutely gorgeous. As you can see, there is not very many places in the world as nice as this. This is actually a provincial park where you can get permits for campsites, but you must portage in with a canoe. Although the provincial park states that fishing is one of the allowed activities, it is actually a fish sanctuary according to the Ontario Fishing Management. How unfortunate. And this is Woodland Lake. We had a fishing trip here this year. This is in Muskoka and is another absolutely beautiful place. We stayed here for a few days and caught lots of nice fish. These pictures are from a fly-in at Equilick. We were here for about a week. This is way up north near James Bay. We were catching a lot of fish. One day, my brother-in-law, Mark, who is my fishing partner, wanted to have a fishing challenge. That day, I caught 37 walleye, or pickerel if you happen to live in Canada like I do. We care a lot about fish conservation. For this reason, we practice catch and release, and we use barbless hooks in order not to hurt the fish. We only keep one or two fish per day in order to feed ourselves for shore lunch and supper. Unfortunately, due to commercial fishing and sports fishing pressure, most lakes that can be driven to have very little fish left in them. In the past, commercial fishers have filled their nets and most sports fishermen have caught their limits and taken those fish home. This practice has to change in order to allow those lakes to rejuvenate. This is another trip we took to Lake Herbert in northern Quebec, another beautiful spot way up north. Again, we caught lots of fish, at least 30 per day, and one day I noticed a mink under the dock. It turned out that he was a little thief. He was swimming down and stealing our fish from under the dock. He was taking them right off the stringer. And when I caught on and removed the stringer, he started trying to steal the fish away from me as I was cleaning them. Quebec is another beautiful province in Canada. The northern part of Quebec is absolutely covered in lakes. As you can see by these pictures, there is as much water as there is land. It is fantastic fishing in this province. This is my daughter, Christy. We went for a fishing trip in Lower Bolio Lake and had a good time. We were only there for a couple hours, but we caught four fish. Pretty good, pretty good day of fishing? Yeah, it was great. I haven't caught a fish in years. Years. Okay. <laughs> we'll just pretend that I caught two and you caught two. Okay. <laughs> you can say you caught them all if you want. Uh, <laughs> that's not believable. <laughs>
This is my other daughter, Melissa. I thought I would take her out and see the beautiful fall colors in Northern Ontario. As you can see, we can't keep our eyes inside the plane because it is so beautiful at this time of the year. Unfortunately, the color Bonanza does not last very long, only during the month of October. But while it is here, it is absolutely spectacular. In a few months, this will be followed by snow, which is also beautiful, but in a different way. I'm like portaging around here. Getting in here other than a full plane. Yeah. We're like portaging right now. What's that? We're portaging in the plane. Unfortunately for me, I do not have skis for the plane yet, so I will have to take off the floats and put wheels back on. And this means I will have to use airports for takeoff and landing, which will not be so entertaining. It would be fun to have skis for this plane so I could drop down these lakes in the wintertime. But that's something for the future. If you like this video, I have a couple more coming out soon. So check back later and see the short takeoff and landings in the Holland River. Very cool. Also, I have the 100 hour aircraft inspection video coming out soon. This was made possible by the awesome guys at Aurelia Aviation. I was allowed to participate and film all the work necessary to do the 100 hour inspection. These guys are the real McCoy, extremely professional in everything they do. Anybody that needs work done on their aircraft, this is the place to take it. I hope to see you next time in Northern Canada. Bye for now.